Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you yeah? can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really? disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. There could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, very strategy. Very terrible <laughs> strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Hello and welcome to The Advocate. On this episode, we have for you a port period of seasoned topics. You know me, always got my finger on the social media pulse. I talk about the Forbes cover page boy and Yahoo Yahoo. Chuka is calling out religious noisemakers, while Ekene sets out her therapist chair and invites us to talk about those who have a meltdown. She's not talking about me. Benga, our guest advocate, takes on the topic of, you know, that Yam Festival and the brothers in Germany. Uche, on the other hand, ain't got time to waste. She's calling out scam pastors and why we all continue to listen to them. This episode, as usual, is The Advocate, No Holds Barred. Right, now me first. My topic is titled The International Licensed Rogue. I don't know about you, but I have often taken umbrage with this trend by Western media of lauding short knickered freshers with titles such as best 30 under 30 or most achieving 100 under 40, etc. There are many of them too boring to list. Personally, I found it somewhat sinister with a huge dose of cynicism. Which brings me to the recent trending story of Obianwane Okeke, aka Invictus Obi. Obi has a CV that was not only the envy of his peers and even his elders, but also one which was celebrated on the international stage. At only 32 years old, Invictus Obi had already adorned the cover of Forbes magazine as the Forbes 30 Under 30, this was in 2016, featured on the BBC, delivered a TED talk and even addressed an audience at the prestigious London School of Economics African Summit. His business portfolio spanned across many African countries and the businesses ranged from oil and gas, agriculture, infrastructure, including solar energy, would you believe? Obi, as Group MD of Invictus Energy Group, had been showered with countless international awards. Said it was lauded to be one of the brightest stars to emerge from Africa. Now, we all know how the saying goes, ladies and gentlemen, if it seems too good to be true, that's right. So when news broke this week that the phenomenally bright spark from Nigeria was actually a corporate Yahoo boy, that's fraudster to you and your boy watchers, Nigeria's social media went on fire. How did this go unnoticed? The gaping hole in this whole mess is that word, due diligence. The first blame, of course, sits squarely on Obi and Wainer's shoulders. However, the second to international media houses, especially Forbes, the only reason I can fathom for Forbes not to have known this very simple fact is because they just simply didn't care. How does a 20-something-year-old get to be a big player in the capital-intensive industries such as oil and gas real estate? Unless inherited, it's near on impossible. After all, we all know the genesis of Mark Zuckerberg's story. So why didn't anybody ask Obi about the genesis of his wealth? Which brings me to the third accessory of this crime, our society. These days, every young Nigerian who is yet to even register a business name is a motivational speaker. They are positioned on platforms higher than their grades with inv invitations to lecture in grammar that's above their comprehension. Public speaking is not the ambition for millennials and Generation Zs, never mind if they have one single GCSE. It doesn't matter that they lack substance or experience. As long as they are young, above average articulation, sharp suited, expensively weaved, combined with over 500,000 social media following, they must be worth the invitation. 
Of course, some of them also learned the trick from their mentors. I won't name any names. In this fast-paced era of digitalization, who has time for details, I ask, when all you have to do is just skim over the headlines? So I suggest to those of us who care, we go back to basics by scrutinizing our children's earnings and wealth the way our parents did to us. Well, I'm not surprised about the Forbes one. Okay, why not? Um, Forbes does not I was not surprised. Check. No, no, no I, 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 can it's you be true. surprised? I don't want to name anybody, mm. but there's hardly a decent Nigerian that's very wealthy. And Forbes continues to publish lists of $2, million, $2 billion is this man, he's Nigerian. Another 1.5, that man. Oh, this one sank, but he's back to $2 billion. How did they make that money? And Forbes is publishing it. Back in the day, when Forbes publishes something, it's you trusted yeah, it. you trusted it. Yes. The Sunday Times rich list in England. It's one of the most trusted. They won't yes. put back in the day. They didn't put the Sultan of Brunei. Yes, they said yes. because he is one and the same king and owner of the country. Mm -hmm. So they did stuff like that. Yes. Our heads of states, African heads of states, who are reputed to be very very rich, were never on the list. Very and true. they ought to have been in terms very of actually what they own. This thing has been going on very well. You said back in the day, what made the difference with Forbes? Because I still thought For, they were a Forbes, brand. Forbes, I, 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 I know that Forbes started to lose their way because they started to do things with Nigeria. When they started putting some Nigerians <laughs> on their cover, I knew that it was rubbish. Please but let me come in. Okay. <laughs> yeah, then I, was I love the way you said they lost their way after doing, doing things. things like, like, I, was, no, I, I, know what I stopped buying into this whole Forbes thing yeah. because... Um, it got to the point where it was just ridiculous. They were yeah. putting all manner of people yeah. on it. And then I started to hear rumors. I never, you know, substantiated the rumors, but I wouldn't put it past us that we were now paying Forbes to get listed on this list. And now it makes perfect sense. I mean, if a guy like this can just show up, no due dilig diligence, as you said, then it can only mean that somebody, he must have paid a certain amount of money. Forbes didn't even care. They were like, you know what, we'll take the money. And now they're a huge well, embarrassment. Okay. Let, me, let me come in then, because okay. I, I wouldn't go as far as we should say it means that, because a lot of people are just careless, unfortunately. Mm. Maybe there was a change of leadership. Forbes. Maybe, let me, let, me get, let me get to where I'm going. Um, and so essentially, I, we've seen some of these Forbes under 30 come through uh, our station. And when you look at them, you look at their background, you can understand if there was an agenda behind pushing young Nigerians and promoting them, I would support that agenda. Because a lot of them are having to work extra hard in an environment that doesn't favor them. So I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. As far as I'm concerned, if you do that, and when you watch some of their testimonials and you hear some of what they've gone and you check it out, because we here, we go and check it out before we, we put them on the program, you find that actually these people have had to go the extra mile to get to where they've gotten to, more than their peers, where things are working. And it also gingers other young people when they see that people like themselves, in spite of the economy, in spite of things not working, are pushing and going the extra mile and being innovative. So I give it to Forbes if they have that agenda to promote Nigerian youth in an environment where Nigerian youth aren't being given space to breathe. Mm. So no, but I, but I agree with Erecti to say that, you know, in terms of putting the blame on them, they really should. It's a, complete mess up for them to do this. And you know, I feel that maybe they were being shoddy in their journalism. That's the best I can do. But if you then go back to ours, because I want to touch on ours before I, I, I finish, I really feel that our society has a lot of blame when it comes Absolutely. to promoting this you know, sub, you know, unattainable yeah, or packaging. You know, we're too hooked yeah. on packaging. I think I even yeah. mentioned in my last yes. advocacy, everybody has an NGO. Everybody has something mm. they're doing. There's always a microphone. There's always pictures. There's always an image you're projecting. And when you look behind it... All for it, the gram, my darling. I really exactly. think it's to me. social media yeah, age, it's really, And then if you... Recently, I think even the Wadume story that's still making me sick at the stomach. Mm. Here's somebody who is enriching himself as a kingpin kidnapper. Mm. And the people around him are saying he built a hole, he built us yes. a, a mosque. Are, 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 you, are you thinking I, 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 Fame is no name. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. This atmosphere that we are creating, yeah. there yeah. is no office, that is, there is no profession called motivational speaking. Exactly. <laughs> but mean? yet it's an ambition now for but, most But for, young uh, for people. us in Nigeria now, yeah. it's something that, it's, it's a dream for them. Yeah. I actually see it it's on a people's profile. It's public a destination. Speaker. What is a public speaker? Yeah. I mention, Considering I don't go to I, any public speaking And you see, when I place, tell people in my academy, I say, you know what? No. Mention no. any public speaker or motivational speaker in the US, in Australia, in London, in Germany. Mention one who is not an entrepreneur, either a creative entrepreneur. Or, or is a writer who is, then, who is then coming to see. He's, he's, he's doing 
come fame. He's speaking he's, out of yes, something. He's doing, he's doing something before saying something. Yes, yes, okay, yes. I like yes. that. If you, not, if you are not doing anything, don't come and tell me anything. What you haven't Correct. been able to achieve. Do you understand? Yeah. Because I want, it's about do. What yes, do you do? Yes. A young lady yes. brought a guy, said, this person I want to marry. I said, okay, what do you do? He said, I'm planning to travel out. I said, are you okay? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> That's do. an ambition now. I'm like, do. What are you doing? Do. Nigeria has a huge uh, uh, percentage of young people. That is true. But it's not about the percentage of young people that matters. What is the quality and the quantity of the, the young people, the density of that youth? Mm. That's number one. Number two is we have to be careful because there is a saying, we are Africans after all. And in Nigeria, there is a saying. And it says, in, in Yoruba, they say, Kosi Bomode. Sheleni, ashoto kola kisata bala. Omo le la shob. So, omo le la shob. So, which basically means, which base, yeah, which basically means it doesn't matter how many new clothes a young person can have, they cannot have as many old clothes, which old clothes being experienced. So, we, in, and I find, that's what I find sinister. Because they don't do it in the UK, US. They keep pushing our young people forward without actually giving them time to grow out of their short nicker. And that's what I think happened with Invictus Obi. Mm. That's why nobody ever asked him. He's from yeah, a poor family. Where was the first chunk of investment from? For nobody him. ever yeah. asked him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. let me just correct the name. Obi Wanne. That Obi Wanne, thank yeah. you. The heart of you a know. brother. Yeah. yeah, the heart yeah. of a, a brother. There you go. Well, he's got a heart, all right. The heart of a he's brave. <laughs> the heart of the money. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. What can I say? Yahoo Yahoo is certainly a brand we don't want to promote, or be to want to encourage young Nigerians to strive and go forward as much as possible. After the break, Chuka takes us on a matter of public nuisance. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. So the moment impressed. you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, like fire. A terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. So, unless we clamor about certain things, the only option we have is to put up with it. So, I'm talking about noise for God. There are laws against visual and acoustic nuisance and against the wrong placement of unauthorized types of buildings in certain areas. But here in Nigeria, many probably think there aren't any or feel they should not be obeyed. Or what else explains the noise we are subjected to daily? Or the factories, churches, and whatnot that are located slap bang where they should not be? Back in the 1980s, when we would drive about in the UK, my friend's mother warned him when he was given a car to drive, please do not use your horn as we do in Lagos. Very fair warning, because here in Lagos, Motorcycle riders and car drivers compete to win the title of noise creator of the times. And we're not averse to the odd noisy street party either. Not very odd though. But let's focus on places of worship. One would expect that these supposed bastions of moral uprightness, of consideration for man and woman, would obey the laws. Not so. Why should there be a loud call from a mosque? or overly loud singing and chanting from churches. These building types ought to be soundproof, containing whatever is being discussed or chanted within their four walls. It is bad enough that the churches especially are now to be found on just about any residential street. Is this, is this the thinking, any way to do with worshiping God? Is it okay? Hurting other people's feelings? causing great disturbance and sometimes causing delay to those at work, all in the supposed name of God. I think it is time that state governors crack down on noise pollution and blatant disregard for urban planning laws. Yeah. 
I agree with you, mm. Chuka. Thank you very much. I you made gone. me laugh, Chuka. <laughs> I'll, I'll come there in a minute. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in an estate um, prior to the one I currently live in, and there were like eight. I think maybe even 12 churches. I'm mm. thinking, you know, Gosh. there on private That's an abuse. every street. And you know, okay, I went, I've got, I go to church, no problem. But I went, came back, and then I wanted to have my Sunday rest. Of course. But I can't have it. Got to have know? an afternoon nap because in Nigeria. This noise is ongoing. And you know, when people start doing church, they, they, they can actually start doing church from Thursday evening. Yeah. So it means you're going to be disrupted. So I never got any rest in that estate. Mm. But I, ex I accept it because it wasn't necessarily a highbrow estate. So I just thought, you know, let's, these are the things that need <laughs> to be put up with. Oh, with that. <laughs> yes. And then I moved to a highbrow estate thinking I could have some peace and quiet, but not at all. Now we have um, a hotel in the estate. And not only do we do they have live band and everything, then on Thursdays it quickly changes because they've been taken over by a mega church. And so from that moment on, it is you know, all manner of singing, this, that, and everything. I am not against worshipping God. I'm not against singing to God. I'm not against any of that. But there needs to be some consideration. I mean, not everybody buys into that. And we cannot live under that stress of noise, yeah. coupled with the parties. Nigeria, you're absolutely right. I understood that Fashola had put in a noise. There, um, no, not just Fashola. There is actually there a bylaw, a legal yeah. state bylaw as if against nobody seems noise to making. care about that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's as if everybody's just like, well, you know, well, whatever. They stopped enforcing you know? it. They stopped enforcing yeah. it. Well, yeah. I think it's time to yes. say and that's it back where, because it's well, getting out of hand. What I'm looking at is a cultural <laughs> thing. A cultural I know you're targeting <laughs> churches, and yes, they have made themselves the elephants mm. in the room, kind of, because you know they're so prominent. But I think what you're dealing with is cultural. It's nothing to do with religious behavior. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I was recently somewhere in a public place that several people inhabit. And this lady came with her friend and she thought it was perfectly normal to start playing her music loud and dancing. And I thought, she didn't bother to ask the rest of us who were there before she got there. Mm. If, you know, Nigerians are like that a bit, inconsiderate. But so I want, yes. to, I want to say, you know, look at the laws because um, the building, urban planning, you know, why is it that they have turned a blind eye to where they let people build? You know, I know where I lived in Enugu. They start their night vigil. They start, they start praying. Thursday, right? But my problem was, like, ah, yeah, very loud on a Friday night till 3 in the morning. I can't sleep. Mm. You know? And I thought I was going to get up one night, even at 1, drive there and you know, threaten them that I'm going to call. Hey, I'm a Christian. I love it. But what are you doing? You're keeping everybody. It's not mm. fair. But mm. as I was asking you before the program, we mm. must find out. So mm. make this advocacy pointed. Who do we report it to? Because I'm no, all it's about easy to it's the Ministry of the Environment. You can actually report it. Yeah, and they we will, should. And they will come. They will, they will come because they have to stop. You can't terrorize people like that. What kind of nonsense? A, you need a governor that cares enough to want to ensure. Look, Fashola cared, and that was or BRF. He cared, and that was the difference. Mm. The, and, and we hope that the new one, Sonwolu, will also care. No, the scripture says, "Make a joyful noise oh, to the Lord." Oh boy! But at the same time. You have to show consideration for others. The love your, second love law, your neighbor as yourself. The second law, mm. you just took it from my mouth, mm. says love your neighbor as yourself. And mm. Romans 15, if I'm permitted to say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Romans 15 says, <laughs> do that which pleases. Mm. Do that which pleases your neighbor. Mm. Yeah, so you, do you understand? Yeah. So you need to, which means you, consideration, you understand. But you see, beyond that, in other climes, I know some few countries, you build your house with your money. Mm. Before you pack into that house and call everybody to come and yeah. eat, Amala, they will come and check, inspect, e inspect yeah. everything, house, worship centers. Yes. If it is not soundproof, yeah. you cannot go start. there. You yeah. can't start. You won't be able to start you your won't start. business. Or so I feel that our advocacy should go towards that direction. But that's what that's Papi was saying. That's, that's what, what he said. That, that before you get, before you do anything, people. Should and you see, we should start. We should, yes, we should start responding rather than reacting. Once you see that thing under construction, mobilize yourself. Go to the I mean the right quarters and report. That, you know what? This hotel is coming here, and we know yes. it is wrong. So you know, here's what I'm saying about that. And what you've got to bear in mind is religion is money in this country. Yeah. Okay. And even more, so not only is it money. It's also works hand in hand or is twinned with politics, mm -hmm. all right, and is twinned with power. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, right. so you and I can complain, and I'm not saying we shouldn't. I mean, we all, all of us here, we're, that's why we do this, because we do complain. Mm -hmm. but, but what you must bear in mind is that if the, the, 
hotel. the hotel near mm -hmm. Uche's house. They offered them. Don't be surprised that people had actually written. Oh. Like, people do write against these things. I was about to say that. that people, people do have, write. They respond, yes. Everybody has complained. Yes. But the money was too much. The yes. money was too much because you legally but the, they but the, are also... The money yeah. complains better. Yes. The, 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 no, the, the money, money complains better. Louder. Yes, exactly. The money speaks louder. Okay. And so we've been correct. told that we have to wait for the um, lease to run to out. out. Can you believe yeah. it? Do you know how many TV stations, you're talking about religion here, do you know how many TV stations actually, they, they sell the whole of airtime to religion because mm -hmm. they pay mm -hmm. the money yeah. that right. you and I can't pay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's how they pay their salary. Yeah. Religion yeah. is money. And deny, money is deny power, that bigger content. And power speaks, mm. you know, so yes. Rejoice in the name of Jesus when you have money. Yeah, I think that's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's sad really. Um, I find that well, to money in the first place is yeah. sad. So, well, raising an objection <laughs> well, is necessary from time to time, even if it means stepping on the toes of others. A Kenya objects to a certain kind of noisy behavior after the break. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Is it time to give you a piece of my mind? I'll be talking today about emotional meltdown. All of us must have come across it at work or in a family setting. We may even be the ones at the center of it. I'm referring to an emotional outburst or meltdown. Having witnessed a few of these in the work environment, particularly by women, women I hasten to add, it got me thinking. Is it that we haven't learned how to manage our emotions or we don't realize how inappropriate our outbursts are? Please note that although women are typically seen as the more emotional sex, some researchers assert that men have a larger part of their brain devoted to emotional responses and a smaller region for logical thinking than women. <laughs> In other words, men are more wired to be emotional than women. Interesting. Certainly, no two people are the same, which is why some may endure quietly internalizing hurts and bearing a grudge, whilst others believe it in let it out and let it go. Yes, I do agree that there are times when an outburst can be therapeutic. However, this benefit quickly gets lost if the occasional becomes the habitual. So my prescription is good communication. Talking through the issues in a way that allows for the fact that the person on the other side may well not agree with you. In other words, don't bludgeon them with your raised voice or bamboozle them with your tears. All these are a sign of emotional immaturity. I've been there. I tried this out in the early years of my marriage and soon realized it wasn't doing me any favors. Looking back on it now, I indulge my feelings because I couldn't be bothered to keep them in check. The way I felt superseded the comfort or discomfort of others, so I let them have it. It's time we learn to read other people and situations and to keep our reactions, misplaced expectations and possible misreading of a situation under surveillance. It's time we developed some emotional intelligence. The dictionary defines emotional intelligence as the capacity to be aware of control and express one's emotions and handle interpersonal relationships judiciously and empathically. Additionally, we're told emotional intelligence is the key to both personal and professional success. So it's pretty much a big deal. We must ditch the entitlement mentality that says we're entitled to explode our thoughts on people however and whenever we like, just because we feel we've reached the end of our tether. If we spend more time reflecting and cutting other people more slack, we're less likely to be absolute in our reactions and to hit a brick wall in our interactions, which otherwise would predictably uh, result in frustrated outbursts. So let's purpose to grow up for everyone's sake. Yeah. I had to grow up with X, yeah, okay. so it's a good, it's a good um, uh, advocacy you put out there. Um, I think the book that really did change my life, funnily enough, was a book called Emotional Intelligence. Now, I can't remember who wrote right. it, okay. but it was a small blue book, and I needed it because at the time I was considered, you know, kind of like a sport brat. <laughs> yeah, I was reacting to everything, you know, and I bet now you're looking and thinking, is that the same ooch, you know, we're talking about because I'm quite calm these days. But yeah, I used to lose it. You know, I thought I was entitled to lose it and I thought everybody needed, needed to have it. But unfortunately, it was affecting me. So it wasn't, you know, that I was losing and I was getting anywhere. Um, it was stressing me out. I couldn't really sort of reason things out in a mature way. So I came across this book and 
it gave me control over my emotions, over the way I saw things, and a part of it was to cut other people's slack. Okay. So that's what I do now in order to manage my emotions. So, you know, before, um, if somebody does something, I usually want to reason why they did it. And even if that's not the reason or their motivation, I'll still give it to them, just so that I can stay cool. Because losing my cool is, for me, it just, throws me off balance. I can't even, you know, I, I'll be discombobulated, basically. Mm, mm. So I totally agree with this. And I noticed that it happens a lot here in Niger. Sometimes, though, it is good to lose mm. your... Mm. Mm. Lose it. Because lose people don't respect your, you until mm. you If you don't know the mm, that's up to you. Which one's the mm? Oh, well, I'm not going <laughs> there. I, I, I like the advocacy. Mm. I see, but, you see, I'm a bit extreme. I absolutely see no reason why I should accept a meltdown from anybody. Cool. In other words, if you have any meltdown with me, I will completely blank you out. Um, you, you, may have to, you may even have to be the one to come back to me and beg me. Yeah. That's, you know, quite Sometimes frankly, I don't know why I did that. That someone does no, that No, 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 I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. Happy don't love that way. I, I, I don't love that way. He doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> respond to that, you know. I just can't take it. Mm. It's, yes. Why are you freaking and, and I, and out I, Yes, and, and if I, and that's why I, I, I can't remember that I've had one ever in my what life. If your children have a meltdown? You can't go anywhere now. Ah, interesting. You're, 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 you're bound. That's why people melt down with people that they can't something. melt down. They with tend to melt down with people one. they take for granted. This, this one, this one. They can't, they can't you melt don't, down you've forgotten me. puppy. No, but I, I do <laughs> want to say some children. men need to have a little bit more, melt have down. some more Explosion meltdown. Because time. I, what I have seen is that a lot of men, they will internalize stuff and then suddenly they blow up and it just goes crazy. Mm. They like go completely out of hand. I think sometimes. Wait, that's really yeah. it's I like what you're saying. Saying. Sometimes you should have a little meltdown. Sometimes. You see, for me, um, don't forget that we are products of nature and nurture. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, the nurture takes the, 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 the bigger oh. part mm -hmm. of your growth and development. Mm -hmm. The truth is, if you don't understand, is it your personality, is it your temperament, is it mm -hmm. your self-discovery, is it your whatever it is, um, let alone talk, I mean, talking about the person you are dealing mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. especially at work. We're yeah. talking about home, mm -hmm. work, and that's why we have something like work-life balance, because mm. somebody just got beaten this morning by the so-called... How can somebody tell you last night, I love you, and this morning, slap? Mm. How, where's that reconciliation? <laughs> mm. Do you Sorry, understand? Just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for what he's doing. But you know, so by the time... And, and such person get to, to, to his, I mean, to our place of work, how do you expect such a person to perform? To perform. So is, yeah. how do you balance that now... For me, well, you're saying they go out and they take it out on somebody else. Yes, they, they probably will. So, yeah. so that's why these days we encourage people in organizations, even yeah. you know, in families. You know, emotional resilience is out of emotional intelligence. Mm. Oh God, yeah. I need to come in quickly because yeah. I'm hearing too many jargons from too many people. <laughs> that's just not normal. Uche, okay. my sister, she touched on it. Mm. We live in Nigeria. Let's deal with reality, mm. okay? <laughs> really, honestly, and I think Papi touched on it. First and foremost, you cannot prescribe for people's pain. So you, you step on my feet or my leg or whatever, you punch me in the face, you do whatever, you yell at me, whatever. I do not have the right to prescribe for you how you should respond. So because at the minutes that I've expressed and I've applied that anger onto you, I've lost any right to expect to have any expectations. In fact, like you said, I now need to come and apologize, mm -hmm. however you respond. Mm -hmm. So that's taking ownership mm -hmm. of the reactions that we bring that out in people. Out, yeah. Okay, men. Okay, so yeah. you're saying someone yeah. explodes on men. you. Men. <laughs> yes, because, yeah, you understand me? That's the other thing. The other one, <laughs> men, the other one I wrote Women. down. <laughs> <laughs> the other one I wrote down is what you just said about the meltdown and what you said about the male, female, whatever. Mm. It's actually unhealthy, and, and there are research to back this up to actually hold things in. What Uche is talking about is different, is in the sense that I now know what to, how to control my response. Mm. I can choose when to respond and when right. not to respond. And as somebody like me, who's also, I'm, I'm reactive, mm. but at the same time, you know what, Rihanna and Cardi B already said it. Guess what, what happens? She's got to Guess what happens? I don't know what. Nobody notices when you don't say anything. True. It's when you actually speak that they notice, and that's it. So we don't know when people are actually mm, managing and stuff, responding yes. and, and taking, mm. you know, and just okay. walking away. No, see, Till the day they were saying, like, what are you doing? Run, run, run. No, you see, I guess in my case, you know, since Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, I get what you're saying. When, when I was a newly, new 
bride or whatever. I, I, I haven't quite read my, my husband's, you know, so he's very open kind of person. And, you know, he will say what he thinks and he moves on. And I was, you know, really looking at this thing. He'll say some things I don't like. I'll internalize, I will swallow. See another mm -hmm. one. So the thing was stacking up until one day he said the last one and I slammed the door and he said, I exploded. And he was just looking at me like, did I marry this person? Who is this person? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, he to know who you were. The amazing thing was when I let it all out, he said, do you feel better? I thought he was going to be, he said, I feel so much better. <laughs> yeah, you, know. Said, you know, from now on, please try and just find a way to, to Say it. Say Let it. Me Nothing know. would have happened if you yeah. told me. Sorry, yes. before, because of our time. Mm. Um, patience is good, but what most people do by internalizing, especially, you know, some kind of people, uh, especially the grudge. Uh, yeah, you keep it, and before you know it, bam. The truth of the matter is, after patience, I think meekness is very, very important. What is that? Even when you have the ability to strike, you choose to keep quiet, but communication is key. key. In communication, yeah. And excommunication is very, very key. Yeah, but sometimes yeah. smooth communication is not, not always the. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I said my own, or we've, we've all said our own. It's time for you to say yours as regards our advocacy. On whether we still need traditional rulers in Nigeria, Stan De Bravo says, no, we don't. Chuka, I hope you heard that. <laughs> Nigeria is a republic. You can't have kings in a republic. A republic is supposed to be an egalitarian society of equals under mm. the same law and constitution. Mm. But in Nigeria, everything is upside down. Ah, okay. On the cost of westernization, Brandy Wandera says, Africa is waking up. I hope Africans learn their value and worth. Africa is the standard of life to the world. Everyone knows the value of Africa. Maybe they'll say everyone except Africans. Okay. On our advocacies as a whole, Bridget Miller-Taylor says, I cast the YouTube videos to my big screen and enjoy. She's talking about the advocates. Uh, I may or may not throw snacks and argue with you because that's what I do. So, so many of your topics resonate across the diaspora. This is bigger than you know. Well, thanks for letting us know, Bridget. Thank you, Bridget. Yeah. Thank you, Bridget. <laughs> it's so encouraging. OK, uh, keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocates NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocates NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, do go to www.plustvafrica.com slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Okay, it's time for that quick break. Our new guy on the block takes on a trending topic to extract some insight after the break. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. no, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a very terrible. Very terrible. <laughs> terrible strategy. And because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. All right, as the saying goes, there are two sides to every coin. The two phases of judgment and justice. Recently, Nigeria was divided over the issue of an alleged near lynching of former Deputy Senator Ike Ekerimadu. Even now, some are still arguing over the fact that it was a deserved beating, whilst others are condemned the act. I am of the position that the surprise event is symbolic of where we are at as a people. I recognize that the act of several members of the IPOP movement based in Germany is not necessarily representative of Ndi Igbo. <laughs> I hope I got that right. Mm -hmm. However, in a bizarre way, the act of attempting to beat up the senator seems to be speaking for aggrieved citizens from across the length and breadth of Nigeria. And it is saying this. <clears throat> One, Nigerians are fed up with being taken for a ride by our politicians. Two, we feel powerless to communicate our displeasure and so are not unhappy for the message to be communicated by other means necessary. Three, it is not necessarily about Senator Ike Ekerimadu. He is uh, merely a scapegoat 
for the insensitive political class we have suffered as a people. And four, E.K. Ekirimadu, the senator, was in the wrong place, sending out the wrong message in that he displayed an insensitivity that is typical uh, of our governing class by wearing a Nigerian coat of arms traditional top to an indigenous gathering where some of those represented there are angered by the way Nigeria is being governed. Beyond this, here are other takeaways. The fact that the German authorities are apparently not uh, about to intervene on behalf of the senator to charge the men who assaulted him with an offense may give further hope to Nigerians that they can take action overseas, <clears throat> not within Nigeria, where they have been um, unsuccessful on home soil. Added to which is the alleged offer by the notorious Nam Dekalu of one million naira to whoever would make available to him the travel itinerary of southeastern politicians abroad. And you have a practice uh, that could catch on. We see it in the purported chasing away of the foreign minister, <laughs> Dr. Oyema, from the Nigerian uh, embassy in Austria. Our politicians would do well to become ardent scholars of this recent event as we are doubtless at a volatile turning point in our history of political activism. These are certainly not days for political insensitivity. On the other hand, I'm bringing in a twist to the tale. Let's take the recent event of the purported stormy of the home of former Governor Akinwumi Ambode by the EFCC and the alleged intervention by the people of Ekpe to defend him. A cursory uh, reflection on this turn of events raises the following points. That Ambode's intervention in Ekpe over the past four years seems to have earned him some solidar uh, solidarity among the people of Ekpe. The people are ready to vote with their feet, despite the fact that the wind of politics did not necessarily go well for the uh, ostracized governor. Finally, both events have this in common. The people are engaging to demand justice and to some extent to exact judgment. This leads me to ask the question, have we entered a new era of political activism that speaks to the hope uh, that maybe just maybe we are finally to witness a seizing of power to the people. I was waiting for Uche to jump into this oh, one. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. On the same yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, both of you point. jump. No, I want to ready to go with okay. this. Yeah, I know she's been, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah so, you guys are tag teaming. Well, so a new, what did you call it at the end? You said a new, new wave, era, era, era of, of political, political activism. activism. I, I am love. look, whatever, a new wave or new era or new, new bridge. Or anyone. Anyone. New Ashoke, Emperor's New Clothes. Fact. I am loving it. I think one of the things that, and look, I think all of us here, the one thing I can actually testify to is that none of us here actually subscribe to violence. No. We don't, as, as a people and even in this office. And most of our friends and family wouldn't subscribe to violence, but there is a time. And a place and for it. And <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, for real. No, no you say I was talking. You know, is and it goes back to what you were saying and emotional what you were saying meltdown. about this. Your emotion. Look, it's gotten to a point in Nigeria where we've actually been, we've had our thoughts handicapped mm. and our powers truncated, mm -hmm. and the and the by and it's not because. We don't have the guts. It's not, look, the people in diaspora, where are you? It's not because the Nigerians at home don't have the guts. But if you are faced with a AK-47, thank you. Okay? AK-1. Is it AK-1? No, AK Shakabula. <laughs> if you're faced with a Shakabula, okay, I mean, yeah. and, you know, and, and, and your life and, and you protesting, of course that's, that's, that's yeah. bullying. Yeah. And that's the kind of armored oppression. bullying, oppression, thank you, that we have that, here. That we have here. Yeah, so hence why, because otherwise, I promise you, the majority of us would have actually stormed that National Assembly. Yeah. Of course. They wouldn't be sitting there, yeah. you know, like everything is okay, Any getting away with blue Exactly, like everything is okay, they wouldn't. So we have to applaud our brethren. Mm. Look, where are you? In Germany. 
Voshpron Doc Ostranka. technique. Ostranka. I don't understand what I just no. said, but I can't. Danke schön. Danke schön. Danke schön. Danke schön. Danke 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 I'm telling you. But you hey, know. How do you say it in Igbo? Danke. 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 How do you say it in Igbo? Let's say it to them. Uh, 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 Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. But, Thank you, know, you for doing what we so haven't been able I, to I do. I need to come in because, you know, people might be thinking, oh, we're just, you know, uncivilized, crazy, mad people. I'm not part of you people. <laughs> no, I said people. <laughs> I'm going to I say my own. No problem. That's why I'm talking now. You talk your mm. own. You know, people might be thinking, well, civilized, crazy, mad people, <laughs> behaving like animals or whatever, throwing yam and all that. No. <laughs> No, 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 no. You know, yeah, my egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, sounds very bad. Yeah, 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 but, but we have pretty much exhausted every other. Correct. We Absolutely. we've we've come to the table. We begged matter. to come to the table. Yeah. We decided we will vote. So our vote did not mean anything. Mm -hmm. We want to protest. They will tear gas us. They will finish us. Yes. We, you know, what else we've is left strive. for us to do? In fact, we weren't even able to do anything. Thank God for our brothers out mm -hmm. there. Because I've been wondering, how are we going to get ourselves out of this? Okay. Like slavery, yes, yes. you know, like it, it, it's slavery of the mind, slavery everything. of the body, slavery of everything. How do we get ourselves out? I did not know that we would have this window mm. of IPOB and, uh, you know. <laughs> so of really, like, I, like yes. you said, no, I don't subscribe to, but I really do believe that sometimes you have to speak a certain language in order to get your message across. Okay, okay. And if it means throwing yam, Chuka, throw did you want to say? Did you want to with say? Egg. With egg. Yeah, yeah. Well, egg. Well, I can only say that uh, I support the treatment meted out to Equere Madru. Um, because he's, he's just he's an example we've made mm. of just the politicians. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether he's the best politician yeah, exactly. there is or the worst. He has been dealt with yes. as a sign to others. As a symbol. Yes, as a symbol to, of, of what this is all about. Um, it's a bit different, though, from this Amber Day matter, which is a very, very serious and grave matter. And I think that's separate. That's yeah, separate. So I don't want to. Two, I, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking that You're we should right. even leave that one because Outside. I will have to call names here and, quite frankly, I, we know. don't want to be shut down yet, Patrick. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> so, so maybe we'll just leave it to the query man where we are all free to talk now. Okay. Yeah. We wouldn't have been free to talk if it wasn't that the Germans even helped us yeah. by not doing anything said, about okay, it. Okay, may I? May I? Okay. Yes, so, um, essentially, I think we haven't exhausted all our options, as Uche is saying, because mm. I, I remember, as and as I know Uche I keep going say, back to this. I think you've missed Uche said we exhausted anyway. all our options mm. pretty much. I heard that. What else is left? I'm coming now. I'm coming. No, I thought you said she had. She said we haven't. Let me get down to Okay, yeah. So my point being that okay. I would not subscribe to being an advocate for, you say we don't subscribe to violence, but mm -hmm. when you now tell people that, oh, this is the way and we don't mind, go and do it, I, I just say to myself, there's a slippery slope. You have to draw a line somewhere. The fact that someone is treating you badly doesn't mean you should now go find an ultra-virus way to deal with them. It, it, it sets, it's like a footprint in the sand. It's a precedent you're setting up. When I looked at that video we all watched of Liberia, <laughs> and we saw what was happening with the child soldiers, I said, you could easily find yourself in a... In, the people you're clapping for, wait now, let me finish. We are now, let me leave. I have to finish. So no, no, you see, where, where I must establish. I agree, I agree with his oh. point till he oh. gets to point number three, then I part ways. Of course I know, <laughs> we, we're all frustrated by the government or the lack of governance. What I'm trying to say is that, Essentially, if we have, if people are not, and when Uche says, oh, yo, is actually the one that said that we're not cowards and all this. But when I see some of the behavior and some of the way we, we are, we're singing the praises of these people, didn't you see the people who were welcoming the incoming so-called minister. returnee minister? That's that is, part of that is cowardly. Of it's cowardly. When, when, when you can stand up for yourself and you don't, you know, that's, that's, no, because it's cowardly to be endorsing people to do something that you're not prepared to do Although when it's under your nose. People are not yes. ready, people are not are ready to do this. Out. When it's one-on-one, -on -one, they'll be saying, oh, oh God, oh, ballad. But when the time comes that somebody else somewhere else is you go and do it you do your own here yeah, let me put your money where your mouth is, is stop clapping for them I, I, that's I, do it that you do it here why let me know that you're serious now the mental eggs. slavery that is going stop on. hiding behind eggs. i come eggs. do your eggs. own eggs. do your eggs. own eggs mm. no i don't think yes, yes. yes. i don't think we're hiding behind just them no when you won't do it you will send your child to do it but you will do you tell them eggs eggs no no seriously no first of all i don't want my brethren Irrespective of what Maybe label they may have given themselves <laughs> to just be called IPOB agitators. Mm, they are Nigerian agitators. Simple. That's what they are. No, and they, no, I, don't, no, I don't agree with some of the pain. things they're promoting. But no, 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 but that's not it. But what I'm saying is they feel my pain. I feel their pain, even though they're thousands of miles You'd be away. They wouldn't no, identify no, with you. No, it's not that. It's not, see, and, and that's the thing. Okay. And I think that's where we need to get to. Okay. But if we all agree mm. that, first and foremost, 
we are Nigerians. And we just said something earlier before we came on air. She said what every Nigerian is asking for is a restructuring program. Sorry. If we do go ahead with this restructuring, then the chance we can then begin to, to talk and discuss the relevance or irrelevance of Biafra. That's why I don't want anybody to be conflating mm, the yeah. issue. Okay. So leave that matter aside. Forget that. But for what you're saying about people um, um, you know, being cowards, no, but as, as I said before, at the end of the day, I do not need a show worry to speak to me, to speak for me. For you. Yeah. I can stand up and speak for myself, exactly. and I have done so. But when you are faced mm -hmm. with a gun in your face, mm. and you've got it, and don't you dare call somebody a coward for that. Mm. What it is exactly. is sense and sensibility. Yeah. Because you have to live to fight another day. Another mm. day there yeah. is strength in walking away, mm. and there is power in We haven't even back. gone out mm. and faced the AK. We have, so though. Be, no, no, as in, we have. in recent times, we haven't protested. Which recent times? Well, have not seen like, I haven't seen people gang together. How many people do I hours where there's there's to protest. There no, no, protest. no, it is. There is like, for example, I, well, I, let me even agree with you. Let me even agree with you. That's it. This is a protest. Well, let me even agree with you to some extent to say what Wenga is saying. For example, what I see as a positive to take away from this is, yes, to some extent, I agree that we are stifled here and they've somehow pressured us to feel as if no, we, we can't. No, we are gone. Yeah. I agree to, to some, some extent. extent. No, no, extent. I, I don't know because I was still trying. Yeah. No, no force. force. Okay, but let yes. me, let me, let me continue. Force. force. One avenue of society. taking it on Thank that doesn't you. necessarily involve, involve, it, involve that's assault that's or promoting assault mm -hmm. is to say, you know, you have the criminal courts. The thing about, I liked about the Liberian... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. The courts of, the tribunals, the external courts. Who are the judges? Yeah. Who appointed the judges? No, 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 no. Like, you know, when you have the courts of... No, no, human rights courts. You can Which is human rights. Which human rights? Like, you get into the human rights. Which human rights? You can sign up. You can go, you can, yeah, to, you can go to human rights courts. That's why and do what? So what? So and do what? So how many are politicians for wars against Ekene, humanity? Ekene, what are you Ekene, talking you know that, about? When you do that, you they're trying to, to push Amnesty to International yeah. out of Make Nigeria. Make sure you're one Don't forget, those guys in Germany, they don't have. They didn't have to do that because they are enjoying. 24 exactly. hours power supply. Exactly. They are not. They are not digging boreholes for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. For Do you us, understand? Actually. So um, kudos uh, somehow. <laughs> okay. If we don't learn from history, history has a way of teaching us a lesson. After the break, Uche narrates a shocking story with a moral. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Enlightenment or the recovery of sight is a thing to be sought after. Over the weekend, I met up with a friend of mine and during our meeting, she shared this with me. It is a true story, by the way. On her way to Abuja, she boarded a car with two pastors of a very well-known mega church. As they got to know themselves, she discovered that there was nothing holy about these men. Not only did they proceed to chat her up, they also invited her back to their hotel where they asked prostitutes to join them. Drinking and drug taking ensued. As the merriment progressed, they revealed to her how they regularly deceived their congregation into parting with their money. These men often go to a place in Ogun State where they are given some mysterious water to wash their faces with. This helps them to prophesy and see visions. The men called what they do a business and claimed that this is a common practice among many so-called men of God. Now, don't get me wrong. There are undoubtedly pastors that are real men of God, but these con men need to be exposed. Hence the reason for my advocacy. Unfortunately, this warning will likely fall on deaf ears because we are a people who willingly and blindly bow to our religious leaders without question, always ready with an excuse or two to exonerate them. Many will even get annoyed with me for daring to call the character of their pastor into question, insisting that how their money is spent is no concern of theirs or mine. It is time people wake up to the scam that is perpetrated in so many Nigerian churches and no longer allow ourselves to be used and abused in this way. It is time we start using our brains as God intended and become more discerning. And there you have it. That's the winger. Look. Mm. <laughs>
All I can say is, which, I mean, I don't even know who I'm more in love with today. Yeah, because I mean, everything is flowing well. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> my love is all over the place. Oh, my yes, yeah, you know. Well, wow. I'm ready to receive. I love my love. So you all, you all... Libby will not take it you all easy with you, me. so don't get excited. <laughs> you know? But, but the, the, the point is, you're so right in the sense that this whole obsession with... So, I can easily wake up <laughs> tomorrow and say, I got the word. Mm. I, I, I've often said, what is the word when it's at home? Nobody can tell you what the word is, but they said they've been anointed. They've got the anointing. They've got the word. For all you know, the word may be in Domi. <laughs> they've got the word, whatever. And then as a result of that, I can then, and look, then there is something people get, forget this washing face thing, you know, the whole juju thing, which I still think is no more than hypnotism really mm -hmm, actually mm -hmm. people can easily be hypnotized mm. in behave in believing in certain things also the, the this thing that they do where they say you know you do miracles in church where mm. i said to her can I, oh yeah, shubu. yeah, yeah but nobody so. hears me say shubu and i can never falls yeah. down so i can see well of course you can see i've just pushed you down mm. and you've got to respond back to me do you understand so when are we i think the people that believe in these pastors then it's serious mental health check. Mm, mm. And, and I, I'm not, I don't mean this as a joke. I mean as in part of the issues, we, we, know, we all know we have a huge mental health issue in this country. And part of what's causing this increase in mental health issues is this belief in fake prophets, fake pastors, duplicitous human beings who, you know, on one hand, they're one thing. On the other hand, they profess to be another. Mm -hmm. And they're actually just as dangerous to our society as the politicians. Mm. You know, I, I really I find them... So. Yeah, Absolutely. The, the, you see, the thing is, um, uh, the, 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 you're talking about the scam pastors. Mm, yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Even, and the, the, I think the problem is that even with men of God that are maybe real men of God, I don't know what word to use, the thing is, we place too high a... Value. I don't know what that is value, so that mm -hmm. I don't say the or wrong word. We place too, we, 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 too much of our, concentr of our concentration at the moment goes to churches mm. or places of worship. Mm. That's the problem. Yeah. We did more in the days gone by because we did not spend all our time in church. No. We did not worship the men of God. We got to work. If you even hardly saw a man Sunday, Sunday, that's when he went to church, yeah. it was even good because he knew what he was going there yeah. for on Sunday. Mm. He didn't have to go for any Friday vigil. He didn't mm. have to do mm. anything. Mm. We got a lot more done and we were a lot more honest. Okay. Yes, you're right. Today, we are less honest. We spend all the day in church. We give all the money to the church. So even if you are a true man of God, as far as I'm concerned, you are complicit yes. in the downfall yes. of this country. Okay, yes. I think that's excessive. Uh, uh, let, me, let, me, let me come in there and say, Clearly, what you're saying exists. Mm. We know that. But it exists in all spheres of life. Mm. You know, we have shams, oh, yeah. we have fraudsters, you Correct. have yahoo, yahoo, e exactly. yeah. uh, entrepreneurs. Yeah. You know, she doesn't of, mean, by the way. She no, no, no. Advocacy. <laughs> you're not you're not, you're not to <laughs> one like, you oh, like, I not I your portion. <laughs> but I'm not saying, let me get back on track. So the point I'm making is not to exonerate them, because they have a higher, for me, they have a higher standard to measure up to, yeah. because you're calling yes. God's name. Yes. Yeah. The yes. sham ones have their problem. So yes. we can't even talk to them, because they're, mm. I don't know, they're, they're already in a <laughs> they're devilish criminals. place. Yeah. Or the people you're addressing, like which is advocacy, say, mm. you who are going in there, even the very word of God tells you, you know, test all spirits. Mm. So my problem is not even the men of God, it's the gullibility with which we approach life. How do you test those spirits? I'll get them. I'll get them. I'll get them. I'll get them. It's a two-way process let me come, of the man of God and you, the gullible. Let me finish. 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 Let my life. It's I your prerogative. Like your if I want functions. to sleep in church, as long as I do my job and I can look after my family, it's none of your business. Clearly, they're so, not but doing I'm the coming, job. But I'm coming. And, and, and the country is not moving. The downfall no, of the country no, 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 or the no, church. No, no, no. If people are hiding behind religion, mm -hmm. it's not the, for the mm. You can't throw the baby out of the bathwater. You know, there are many good things that have been done in the name of God. So let's not forget not that because that, we're castigating yes. them. Yes, today. I'm not debating oh, we're not castigating that. That's a bit cruel. Okay, so she's asking the question very quickly so I can stop talking. How do you test all spirits? Mm. It's the same word of God. You know, people don't know the word. A lot of times they go to church 
and they're looking for someone to just feed them directly. But you're meant to know your Bible. The Bible says by their fruits you'll know them. Mm. So if you read your Bible and you see someone displaying one kind of, you know, superstardom and he's telling you, you're not blinded by that. You're looking at him and saying, this bling does not reflect the life of Jesus. Let me keep watching you. When I notice you're impatient, you're, 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 you're trying to get your way through a bit of a fleshly way and the Bible says, you know, um, not by power or might. I check that and I take it off and I'm watching you. So you, you can't afford to lose your mind I just because you're going to church. You are an educator. No. Highly, no, it's not education no, that no, got no, me there. No, 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 allow me to say no. You're highly educated, uh, 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 analytical-minded <laughs> person. Look, I, I'm sorry. What you don't... When, when, when what's his name said... It remind me of the bloke that said he's dead now. Opium of the Opium of He wasn't talking about the likes of us. He wasn't referring to that. He's to, exactly, he's talking about the masses. Well, and the average masses. You are not that In average that person mm. that's been, that's what I'm talking that, about. That, that's been affected mm. the way yeah, Uche exactly. is talking yeah, about. You know, I'd like to differ, but let Benga go in there. Okay, um, I'm going to be, you know, moving from right moving to Moving your head left, left to right. Mm. The clock yeah. is <laughs> you have 1,000 naira, yes or no? But you don't oh, have 2,000 naira note. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We so, agree. We agree. So Keep going. You understand. Mm. So I when you see a fake two thousand, when you see a two thousand dollar note, you know it's, it's a, fake. So, so when you have original note, you must have fake counterfeit. Mm -hmm. Do mm -hmm. you understand course, counterfeit? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there are three major businesses in Nigeria. Um, number one is politics. Church. Number two is religion. religion. Is religion. Yeah. Number, number three. Is number three. Uh, talk to me after the service uh, for consent. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 To whom brain is giving, sense is expected. Mm -hmm. For the people that are being robbed, excuse me, let them Shine sit down and call your God by yourself. Exactly. He's, he's exactly. closer you to you. He's closer to you than anybody. That's the way he's hearing not your pastor. To an educated person thank you. The way he's person. listening and hearing your pastor is the way he hears you. Mm. I get you, Benga. Yes. But this is why I'm Wind saying, brings, Uche, yeah. I beg of you. We've got to touch this yes, some okay. okay. because we don't have enough time and we might need to mm. con you know, yeah. we might need to continue next week mm. because there's so many angles that one needs to talk about mm -hmm. with where you've come from. Yes. Um, you know, and when I say education, I still say, and I will always maintain, until each and every one of us knows what it's like not to know where the next pure water, let alone meal, is going okay. to come from. Mm -hmm. You do not begin to understand this, the mindset. Now I get your uh, point. Now, yeah, I, now I get your point. point. Yeah. Now I get your point. point. No, no. I argue against oh, that. So yeah. this yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think we have to come back to that. That's, yeah, that, yeah. Yes. I got your right. point now. Well, yeah. what part two want next to, week. What I want to end it on. Okay. Watch out, part two. Yes. Right, our discussions are one thing. Your engagement is another. When the two come together, we know we've achieved touchdown. So keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, when we'll have another hot and sizzling buffet just for you. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you yeah. can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> no, really. disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. There could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, very, very <laughs> terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Yeah.